I don't know what I have eaten, but another fantastic conversation. This time I found somebody 20 years ago. I worked for him and with him and he is now a little bit hidden. He's a serial entrepreneur who exited seven of his companies. He started more than 30 companies. And so I explained seven companies he exited. So he sold that for millions of euros. But that wasn't enough for him. Now he's really a purpose-driven entrepreneur and he wants to change the world with his technology. He wants to create a new internet to make the world a better place. His name is Christophe de Spiegeleer and for me it's an honor to have this hour to share it with you. And I can assure you it is a very open and authentic conversation of a man opening up why he started all these companies and the drivers behind his success. Enjoy Christophe de Spiegeleer. Bye-bye. Welcome to What's on Your Mind with Peter Snowart. Every week a guest talks about his or her story, and that story can inspire you to change your own. Hi, Christophe. Here's Peter. Hi, Peter. How are you? Good. Nice to reconnect in this lovely Monday morning. Yes, yes, yes. Very nice to reconnect. Um, we're going to immediately go dive into the deep because I don't like the bullshit. Um, you have been very successful building companies and making an exit for seven com companies, if I'm correct. What is for you now, if you look back, the secret recipe or the success behind that? <laughs> well, there are multiple elements to that question, of course. That's indeed a not bullshit question. <laughs> so, secret. Is it a secret? Well, there is there a secret there are, i don't think there's a secret there is a lot of hard work some luck but i think everyone has another reason why they want to put all that effort in to make it work mm -hmm. right because if you start it's not going to work like oh i'm just on my chair and it's going to happen and no we all know that starting a business and doing a startup successfully is working against all odds right it used to be when i started in 2000 one out of 100 so one company out of 100 was making a good exit for the investors. Today in America, that's way less. Oh, sorry, it was one out of 10. Now it's like more than one out of 100, which means that if you have 100 companies starting, only one of them needs to provide the return to all of the people invested in. And that's really, really crazy. And this leads to maybe not even that nice design because these investors could potentially gamble and they could sort of do a lot of investment and see what happens. So what is the secret? Understanding the game, I would say. Understanding that an investor needs to make money. At the end, right? They are not in there to uh, be yeah, uh, just at your service and providing you with working capital. And so choosing your investor in the right way and seeing what their expectations are is important. And what about product and team? Is the is, is, is the product the most important or is the team the most important or what, what do you um no i mean of course if, if you go over that list right it's such a broad question sure you need to have the right product and the right technology otherwise you already have no chance but you also need to have a right market for your product because you mm -hmm. can have the best possible product but if you, the market is not ready to buy it then actually what are you doing right then you need to have luck to find the right investor who is basically willing to support you in your ID. You have the expectations right so that you can go through that full trajectory and at the end provide return the, the investor expects because otherwise at one point in time, it's going to crash. Mm -hmm. The investor will not want to work further with you and support you further if that balance is not in life. You need to have enough health because it's also another very important thing. Um, you have to be able to work hard, but more than hard, I would say even efficient. But that means you need a certain amount of good health and good stamina because you will be in periods that things will be tough. So, so, what, you, what, so what you're saying, so take care of your body and take care of uh, the, what you're eating? Um, eating, it starts with eating. Of course, you need some sports, but to me, it starts with, with whatever you put in your body is what comes out of it, right? It's the, it's the start of your engine, it's the fuel for your engine. So keeping yourself healthy, which starts with the kind of people around you, the food you're eating, some, of course, movements that's the only, that, that you need to be healthy. And if you're not healthy, you can never have enough energy to pull it off. Is because that the, you're working against the odds. 
is it in there where you also learned the heart lesson? Because yeah, and that's what I also pointed to in the beginning, which was um, everyone's motivations to do a startup can be different, and it can even change over your lifetime. I dare to say that in the beginning, there were a couple of reasons for mine, but one was definitely also ego, sort of show the people, oh, I can do this, right? I can build mm -hmm. this company. Uh, later on, maybe even guilt feelings, which is more about, oh, but now I have these investors who invested in my company and I don't want to let them down or my colleagues. I don't want them to, yeah, to not feel appreciated for the work they put in. So these are, well, maybe a little bit less positive um, motivations, but yet still can be very effective. And I mm -hmm. think there are a lot of companies in the world who thrive on one of those or more of those, um, um, yeah, motivations but as i personally in my life went on now i have other motivations which is more about how can i do something for the planet yeah how can i make sure that people get higher into their awareness level so that they see that there is more than just this day in day out routine so things change i guess also as we get grow a little bit older and maybe have the get a little bit more experienced or have had some more accidents, let's say, along the along the along the right. I, I think... if, if I find it very interesting what that you just mentioned about the guilt, because we, we talked last night and that resonated with me. And I was like, why did I do it when I was 24, 25? And for me the motivation was quite simple. And it's not guilt, but it was really because I uh, felt I wouldn't say lonely, but uh, I I um had, I was bullied a lot. And that was for me to be somebody and that power, that proof, that power to prove that yes. you are, that you're worth something. That was the, the passion that I got when I was like 20 years ago. Now it's just like you, it's more purpose driven is to give back is to have an impact on the world. And that identity, that ego, that, that all those uh, reactive emotions, I would call them, they're longer, no longer there. Now today, I mean, you flipped from, you call it a wave one entrepreneurship to like the more purpose-driven consciousness entrepreneurship. What, when did, did was that a process or, or, or just you just woke up one day and said, I'm going to do it different? You know the answer, I guess, in your question. It's of course a process. Um, people sometimes need triggers, right? In my case, um, the trigger was that my wife was very sick, Isabel, and she got better at the end, and but that happened in ways that I had to re-envision how life is actually. Mm. Certain things which deemed impossible became possible. And I was, am a very rational person. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to say, yeah, but wait a minute, there is something happening here which I can't explain. And that happened over and over again. So that triggered me to start learning about other things. Like, is there more than what you could see at first sight? Um, why are we doing all of this, right? Do we do it out of ego? Do we do it out of guilt? And at the end, you, I ended up with a little bit empty feeling. It's like, yeah, I was now a um, successful entrepreneur, but to what does that lead? Yeah. Am I going to just create yet another company? Mm -hmm. Will that make me happy? And the answer at that time was about 10 years ago was, no, it won't make me happy. And then it was a process. It was with little, little things, you know, in the beginning, it was as simple as just saying to myself and my colleagues, you know what, whoever we work with, we need to start from being positive. We're not going to deal anymore with, um, yeah, we start from the possibilities. We start from giving um, respect to each other or loving each other or all these positive things. And that was already a huge step, but that's just the beginning. And it went like from there more and more into, oh, wait a minute, we can really make a difference. And people start, latching on and they want you to succeed and then what you see which is the most loving thing is that so many startups and people start helping each other rather than envying each other and that yeah. was a complete shift the big the biggest thing if they would ask me what i learned from you and i'm very grateful for that is think big and think big and bold because i'm honestly at the time i wouldn't have thought that you would do it and got it so big but you did it anyway and i think that's for a lot of people, they think too small. Now, the things that you're doing right now with refolds, I mean, one of the things that you want to solve is actually the poverty in, in Africa, if I'm correct. Well, let's talk one minute about yeah, threefold and the why. Um, 
if you don't mind. But, but that's that was my question, yeah. Why? Yeah. So threefold is our attempt to, in our own way, because at the end I'm an engineer, right? I'm I'm a technical person. So then the question was, what can I do to help the world with, of course, our people around and everyone in this project, which is now a couple of hundred people. Well, if you look today in the world, I think, well, again, we talked, we both believe that the world is needs to, can improve, but for that, it needs more awareness, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, this happens in three levels. The first level is just the physical awareness of the world itself, like um, climate change, right? We need to be more resourceful and we need to be more careful in how we use the world resource. Okay, step number one. Most people realize that and I, I hope that most people go there. Second step has to do with your own personal growth, going out of the victimhood, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, am I a victim in this world or can I actually do something to make a difference? I sometimes call this, okay, do, are you willing to make the first choice? And your first choice is, choosing that you can that you have a choice actually so yep. do i accept i have a choice and i make that choice that's the number two fine many people still get there as well the number three is that we need more conscious and digital we are a cyborg today i mean we use our phones computers we would not be able to talk if we don't have the digital world in front of us mm -hmm. but yet still pretty much everything we use day to day in our digital life is not ours we became a product in a very big thing. We exist more than 100 times with a Facebook, with a Google, with an Amazon. And every time we exist, we are a product of something bigger. There is a lot of data coming out of us. And we don't realize that we're feeding a huge, big system. But that system does not let us be free in our own digital world. Mm -hmm. So there too, we need to come out of that victim role there as well, where we say, oh yeah, but we're just this small little thing of the big Facebook. No, actually we aren't. If we can imagine that we would have a digital avatar and this our digital avatar allows us to be free in this digital world, but also it makes us accountable because being free without accountable would be a disaster, right? So we need to make sure that we use that freedom wisely mm -hmm. of these extra possibilities. Well, imagine this is possible. Imagine we can give everyone in the world a digital life, which is more sustainable, linked to us, which allows us to express us in a way we cannot be taken advantage of. Hence, okay. that's the attempt of threefold. And that's what we are doing with a community, growing it step by step, um, giving it to the world, uh, asking people to help and put their own part to it because it works in two steps that I won't go too much into detail, but you have the capacity layer, which is, okay, how can we make sure that it's everywhere in the world, right? It's like a solar panel. How can we give back to the internet? How can we give energy to the internet? And then the other thing is a digital twin. So that's but basically what we're doing. So one of the layers is actually building a new internet. Because the yeah, old well, we call it building a new internet, but it's a big the issue with that term is that it means so many things for so many people. So they're like, yeah, what is the internet, right? Um, but yes, if we go back, well, I think you and me, Peter, to the beginning, when we, when we were young, right? We're still young, but younger. Um, the internet was free, yeah? People were just connecting cables. Mm -hmm. There were no big firewalls. There were no big data centers. Um, everyone was literally just by themselves, click, 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 and this internet was growing. And it was amazing. It was such a hope for the future. And then look at where we are today. Oh. 20 companies have more than 80% of the internet capacity. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. That's not what we want. So we need to go back to the origin of the internet, which is why can't we all sort of keep on connecting these things? And if it's on the existing network cables or we do it even completely peer to peer while putting a little wireless box on top of our roof, either way is fine. But we need to go back to the origins of the internet, extending it all together piece by piece in such a way that whatever happens, we have our own way of communication and our own data. But I want to do that by, so that people can buy boxes and these boxes are connected to each other like a kind of peer-to-peer -peer protocol, if I'm correct? It's not a protocol because a protocol wouldn't really work. A protocol is more like how we communicate, right? What is the yeah. protocol of yeah. communication? Okay, you need that too, for sure. Yeah. but. It's more like if you would compare it to electricity, 
we okay. are we are using electricity day in day out right and it comes out of this plug behind us and we can do all kinds of things with it we even don't think about it anymore now the internet became something like that we can't live without it anymore people get unhappy they even don't go to a hotel anymore if there is no internet so in a way it became very similar right it is this thing we need day in day out but let's make this analogy the energy is being produced close to us right it used to be some nuclear plants maybe in your country, but today you have solar plant, solar powered yeah. uh, solar panels close to you or other things. So it became much more decentralized in a way. And the ability of people to put a solar panel on top of their roof and then being able to give that energy to the people around them, that's where it needs to go to. And it's a good, beautiful evolution actually, right? Now, if you would tell people, oh, you know what? Your electricity comes from America and you are in Belgium. What would people say? You're insane. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I take my energy from out of America? Well, wait a minute. Why are you taking your internet capacity then from America or from China? It's the same. It just does not make any sense. Why do you do that? Well, yeah, yes, there is no alternative. That's, I guess, one reason. But we even don't think about it because imagine you're in Africa. There are people make maybe $50 a month with their family. Mm -hmm. Their internet costs $20 a month. Well, that doesn't make sense. Are you going to spend 14% of your salary on internet? And then they get really bad, crappy internet. Mm. But one of the reasons it's so crappy is that everything they do has to go to America and back or Europe and back. There is no local capacity in Africa. There is nothing. And that's insane. So that needs to change in a fundamental way, which means no. Everywhere there needs to be capacity. In Africa, it should go from, if you are in a little village, it should be in your village, right? If you are in a, one of these refugee camps, maybe even, yeah, it needs to be there. And then you can bring the cost down instead of $20 a month to maybe half a dollar a month. So it becomes much more sustainable for people to happen. Because let's face it, being on the digital life is like reading and writing so many years ago. But yet today, more than 3 billion people don't have access to it. And then a couple of billion people have crappy access to it. So that, yeah. that fundamentally needs to change. In other words, it's like this solar panel. Allow everyone in the world to put capacity close to them because our digital life is mostly regional. Huh? We talk regional. We send messages to our friends, which are close to us. If we want to exchange something again, this is close to us. So this internet is fundamentally completely broken and it needs to rebuild. And how, how do you see then that model? Is that, an, is that on a kind of hybrid model where people are going to use some applications uh, from the old internet and some from the new solar panel in the internet? Uh, how do you see that happening? Because people want their YouTube or something similar uh, yeah. platforms. Otherwise, there's going, not going to be a, a, from some kind of adoption. Yes, it, it will go in, 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 in a certain part. Right? Yeah. It's not something like, oh, tomorrow we have a new internet. I wish. But at least the possibility is there. But the part we envision is that the Holy Grail would be, let's, let's first talk about the Holy Grail, mm. of course. And then we're going to say that's not realistic today. I agree. So I'm going to paint a non-realistic Holy Grail. Mm. The non-realistic Holy Grail would be, we all have our digital life in a sort of digital avatar, which is only links to us. Okay. How, how, do, how, do, how do you see that? For me, a digital avatar, what is it then? So you have a box inside your house no. and you have like one big database file which contains everything about you, where you come with your identity? Well, or? Definitely not in your house, but let's, I'll, I'll explain if you allow me yeah. the physical things in a, in a sec. But first is Holy Grail, mm. independent from how it's being implemented. Mm. Imagine you have this digital avatar of yours, which is only linked to you. And it has all your photos and all your data, but also all your applications actually are one. So you become the application. You are the application, right? And everything you do in your daily digital life, talking with someone, communication, finding a place to go to a hotel or on a holiday or shopping, that is all basically experiences which are linked to you as a digital twin or the merchant you're talking with, which also has a digital twin. So you get all these digital twins, billions of them, all talking to each other, peer to peer, right? So there is no more client server because that's today. Yeah? 
you have servers everywhere and you are a client of that server. And then that way it's a big mess, actually. You have all these different services and we are customer with all these different services. And it's a big mess, it's very complicated. You have to remember WhatsApp, Telegram, what did they use to do this? And it's complicated, right? So back to the Holy Grail. All of that goes away, boom. You can still have lots of lots of experiences, right? So that is still like today. At the end, it would look like today. But all of these experiences would go back to your digital twin alone. So you would only communicate with your digital twin. Mm. And your digital twin would talk to all the other digital twins. So basically, you can tell your digital twin, hey, I want to squash this week with my friends, right? Through voice or whatever. Now, think about how that would work. Your digital twin says, Abba, you're in Belgium. So I don't have to look for your friends in Switzerland, right? You are only available that time, right? You like to be to go to that place. You don't want to spend too much money, whatever. So all of that together allows your digital twin to be intelligent with the digital twins of your friends. Mm -hmm. What happens? Boom, I have my meeting for my squash event all done in a couple of seconds, right? Because these digital twins know everything. But that goes for everything. That goes for shopping, for your money, for everything. Today, you're busy half an hour figuring out with your friends, getting them all together. It was WhatsApp and SMS and something else. And then that guy can't make it and you change it and you have to redo it. And then it's full and you know, it's a mess. So it becomes much more efficient and convenient, but also much more sustainable because why is it all that complicated? There is no reason actually, right? So all of that together has the ability to change the way how we educate ourselves, how we communicate and all of these things. So that's the holy grail, right? But then, of course, people will say, I don't want to miss my Facebook. And all my friends are already on Facebook. Yep. But maybe, who knows, at one point in time, they're all on a digital twin. And it yeah. would make your life much better. Yeah, but, but there will be... The, the lifespans like a Facebook or, or the, all the applications, it's, it's rather short. Eh? We think it's, it has a huge impact. But if you look, I mean, 20 years ago when we started, there was no such a thing as Facebook. No. So and people switch quickly. Eh? People switch quickly. In the moment I feel, hey, wait a minute, this is more efficient. It's closer to me. It's more secure, right? I'm not being taken advantage of anymore. I hope that people will switch, but I didn't answer your question about the technology side. So this is the holy grail, which I am convinced we can get to. We have already lots of communities who are interested to kind of go there. And maybe it will start with small parts of the application spectrum, right? Maybe they just start for, I don't know, exchanging a digital currency or, maybe, uh, I don't know, a news app or something, whatever, the, or chat, yeah. whatever the things are. So maybe it will start small. Well, actually, we're starting with a Dropbox alternative, Zoom alternative, and um, Dropbox, Zoom, and some office thing. Okay, that's already not that smart, but that, or small, that's what we start with from digital twin perspective. So you can say, instead of my Dropbox, which is centrally, I have it on my digital twin, only linked to me. If I share photos with you, right? Actually, my photos are not copied. No, it's the photos link. stay on my digital twin. You see them in your digital twin, but seamless, but actually they remain on mine. So it's all much more logical if you think about it. It's way more logical. So we're going from client server to peer to peer, actually, if you want to have it in a technical term. That is the grand vision. But it's like, okay, I believe we can get there and we are far. But of course, we all together need to want it. But then the question is, to your point, oh, but where will my data be? Will it then be in a little box in my home or, or, yeah. or where do I have to put it? Well, that won't work, right? We cannot expect everyone to install a box at home and mm -hmm. become like an IT provider. So that won't work. So where do we have to put it then? Oh, I put it with Amazon. Yeah, but that's maybe also not the intention. We're just trying to have it closer to us. And, we, and then we come back to this idea of the solar panels, right? So we all need as people, and we call them farmers, actually it's still next to me. <laughs> This is an example of a box, right? Okay. This box it costs about a thousand euros, more or less. Now, how many digital twins can we host in one box like this, do you think? I don't know. <laughs> the storage is spread out in the internet. Oh, yeah, okay, that was, that was my question. A storage right? and, no. So the storage you can never lose. And we can yeah. talk more about technology later. Yeah, but, that, but that's uh, then a lot, eh? Then you, I don't know, thousand, two thousand digital twins. That would be. I wish that would be maybe hundreds, yeah. hundreds. Yeah, hundreds, like uh, two hundred or so today. Today, and I'm, I think we can get it to three or four hundred. But 
let's say 200 to make it an easy number. 200 for a box of 1,000 euros means that for five euros, right? For five silly euros costs, you can have the basics of your digital life done. But that's insane, isn't it? Of so course, why, why would we hand over everything to Facebook and all the others if for only five capex? So what's the top cost? And then of course there is a monthly cost, but it's insane. It can be very, very effective. So if people now start, and we call them farmers, we have big farmers, they have big, big boxes. We have boxes up to 50,000 euros. It's not ours, it's any piece of hardware people buy. Um, or you have a box like this, which is smaller. The smallest one are, I don't have it here, but they're 100 euros, they're small. So depending if how big of a farmer you want to be, you put a box and you, you come, become a farmer. Why do we call it a farmer? You are a person interested to invest in storage and compute capacity. You put it in your home, your office, a data center. And then that way you give this capacity to your peers, yeah. to your environment. And that gives the energy, let's say, for the digital twins to, to be. Hmm. And people are going to access it via the normal computer that stays the same of course stays the same so your phone your computer your experience would be pretty much the same actually well actually it probably would be no it will be not the same it will be easier <laughs> but i mean from capabilities perspective you can still do things like this or like zoom or um, still see your files share them with other people or all of these things will be the same that will become more convenient. You won't have to remember five messaging services or you won't have yeah. to remember where all the data is. So it will become more convenient. And it's then the, the responsibility of the farmer to keep uh, the hardware and software up to date. No, because if that would be the case, it would never work because then you're expecting them to be maybe little IT experts and that won't work. No, this system is fully autonomous and that was the hardest thing to do which means that it's like a self-driving car, mm -hmm. uh, which means that if a box dies, no problem, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the person can just fix the box, connect it again, but if they don't have to think about it. There is actually not even an install on the box. Everything comes through a sort of blockchain powered peer-to-peer -peer system where there is no install. There is no software being deployed on the box. It all comes directly from the network, very efficient, so that there is not even an upgrade process. All of that is like a dynamic thing. It's a little bit, you can put it like uh, how our body works. The cells in our body would be the digital twins, right? And in our body, we have trillions of cells and they all work together and they create organs and they all work together to make us alive, right? Yeah. And all these cells have storage, DNA. They have the ability to talk to each other. They have the ability, they're smart actually. And they all amongst each other make that work and work together to make something. And bigger. they renew all the time. And they renew all the time. But these cells can't live without our body. Because no. if there would be no body, no energy, they, it wouldn't work, right? So the energy, the body, is basically these boxes which are everywhere. But the only way how this can work is to make these boxing, boxes like self-healing. Because people, if you have to be a solar panel expert, yeah, you, you're not going to then install a solar panel, right? It's too complicated. You just want to buy a thing, put it on your roof and forget it. The same thing here, you, you buy that box, you plug it in and you forget it. It's the only way how it can work. And who is going to determine what applications are going to be installed? That's the ecosystem, everybody. Uh, no, does... because that's, the beauty is that actually there is, well, there are two steps to this process. Step number one is this capacity can be used by anyone in the world for existing IT workloads. Yeah. Right? Today on the, on the net, there are these existing standards, S3, Kubernetes, Docker, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Right? Well, you can run them as is on that capacity, which means instead of putting your IT workload in uh, an Amazon data center, mm -hmm. you can put it on boxes close to you, provided by the people around you. Okay, that's one thing. But that's step one, right? That Okay, that's a, one step in a good direction. It already means that we're using less energy, it's close to us, it's existing applications, and I as a software engineer or a software company or an IT guy, can deploy my applications closer to where my customers are, to where I am, or my community. I can create my own YouTube and put it on there, or my own Twitter and put it on there. This we can do today, right? All of that is there today. And for that, we have a sort of marketplace where people can say, I want to have my own private YouTube. Click, click, boom. That is now, right? Step one. Step 15 <laughs> is that vision 
of everyone having digital twins. But once you have a digital twin, you are the app. Nothing else is needed. Um, and you have, just like your cells, have a standard amount of knowledge and data and whatever. But together, you can still do everything. Right? So this experience on top can be developed. And that everyone can do. Everyone. So if we go to the stage further future, starting next year, we will allow other developers to create anything they want on top of this. And that, by the way, we call protocol.me. So our protocol, that will be the description how you as a developer can build apps on top of this digital twin. But that's for next year. And the biggest driver to now uh, sign up is actually that you own your own data. That's actually the biggest driver right now. Well, today, unfortunately not. That's what it needs to be eventually. But today we are in the stage that people use the grid for their own IT capacity. Uh, as an example, we have a lot of blockchain partners who put their blockchain workloads on top of this grid because this grid has already a certain size. Um, or people just want to have their Kubernetes or S3 storage archive or something and mm -hmm. put it on there. That's today the main use case and the main reason that people would use this grid or even extend it, which is a good economical incentive by itself. So we need a little bit more time to, but that will be more for next year where we will get communities on the grid, which will do this for basically being digitally free and accountable because it's also accountable. It's not just being free. And that will be more for next year. We will, with conscious communities and with others, try to get them on top of this grid for very well-defined use cases in the beginning, right? It will not be the big thing yet, but small things where people feel comfortable going that way and then say, oh, damn, this is really cool. And then we can grow from there. And you talked, to, you talked to, uh, already a lot about consciousness. I mean, is it... Are you then going to allow everybody? So the good and the bad ones. And I don't, there's no such thing as a good and a bad one, of course. But I mean, I think certain people are go, going to yeah, see hmm, if I can enter this, this platform, I can abuse it also. Yeah. Very good question, Peter. Um, well, the answer is yes. Well, yes and no, actually. I, I said it before. It's like bringing freedom with accountability. Mm -hmm. Because just freedom, that's yeah, correct, bad, right? As an example, when we talk capacity, you are strongly identified, strong authentication, all of that, just like yeah. it's supposed to be. Yeah. And of course, we work in the regulations of countries. We're not rebels. We're not trying to go against countries. Actually, the opposite. We are talking with some countries, how weird that may sound, where we try and convince them to stop hacking their citizens, because that's what they do today. Uh, but basically give them other possibilities to apply their rules, their sovereignty to their country, right? Because at the end, countries are there also to protect us. Yeah, to serve. Yeah. So, and hopefully enough people then stand up if a country doesn't do that to say, country, we expect you to protect us, right? Mm -hmm. But not by all kinds of silly rules, because that's what they do today. They ruin the internet with their silly rules. And that's, of course, ridiculous because then we're going to lose the internet. So it's not about ruining the internet with rules because that's kind of what's happening today. As an example, one thing they're trying to get through, make encryption illegal. Yeah. That's silly. I mean, okay. if you do that, you're basically inviting all the hackers, please, please come and abuse us. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. So that's definitely not the way out. So rather we have to go back to countries and say, no, no, no. You can have it in your country with your rules and all transparency but people need to know, no secret hacking like it happens today, because if governments have to resort to hacking, it means that hackers have access to our stuff too, which is today's the case. We are being hacked all over the place. Mm -hmm. Once we go to the digital twin, we go one step further. And one of the things, it's actually a friend who was convincing me to do that, who has this big social network. And he said, Christoph, I didn't realize it, but he said, the most important thing is people need to not be anonymous. At first I thought, that's weird. We have to be anonymous. But he convinced me, he said, no, no anonymity. Because if you take anonymity away and you get reputation in your system, mm -hmm. reputation about who you are, what you do and so on, you automatically make life much more beautiful because all these lies and manipulation automatically go away. 
and you give a better room for, for as an example, artists. Artists have a hard time defending themselves against so many people who don't mean well or feel themselves interesting or whatever. And that goes all our way. So it becomes a much more beautiful place where you as a person, just like the old days, you know, we're coming from a world where we lived in small societies. And you knew if you, were, if you were causing havoc, then people knew. And it was like, Christoph, damn you, right? You're not supposed to do that. So this, in a way, needs to be in there as, as design, as part of that design of that system we build. Of course, can there be exceptional situations where anonymity is wanted? Yes, there will be. But they need to be exceptional situations, not the norm. If they are not the norm, automatically people will be more accountable in what information they put there, what they say is true, because that's a big problem. How does everyone know what's true today? It's a big mess, right? So that needs to be restored. And that only can happen by reputation, by making people accountable for their actions, and by introducing strong uh, authenticity and uh, identification. And that's what we're planning to do in the digital twin level. So yeah, everyone is welcome. If they mean well or not, everyone is welcome, as long as they respect the same rules. Yeah. There's no problem. But isn't it then, the, the, between brackets, the danger that threefold is going to be whoever runs threefolds has the power? No, because we were trying to do everything we can to make that not happen. Um, and that's why the farmers need to be independent which they are today. So these farmers, these people putting these boxes, you want them to be everywhere. And you want to, today we're not decentralized enough, which is a fact. But we are hardly hard working on that to get many, many more farmers, many, many more locations. They all need to be completely independent. And then through blockchain technology, they make it work basically, which means that no one actually is in control of that network. And that's how it should be. Otherwise this can never actually work. Um, so no, we are very hard trying to get out of the picture so that the only thing we do is, okay, we can suggest to use some code, right? And then farmers still have to accept it. And then other people need to say that that code is the good one, right? So that that code can become reality. So it needs to go, and we already have a lot of that in place actually, but not enough, uh, but it needs to go to a fully, fully, fully decentralized um, system. And um, I mean, the data has to travel over a line. I mean. 5G, do you need that or are you against it? <laughs> I'm against 5G, yes. At least in the way do you how need it's... it. Do you need 5G actually? My opinion, no. Um, are there certain parts of 5G useful? Yes. About less latency and things like that? Yes. But the way how they want to implement it is absolutely horrible uh, because they're planning to use a, a higher frequency, a much higher frequency. And that frequency can barely travel walls, okay? And that means that if they go to that higher frequency, they would have to put base stations every 50 to 100 meters. Base stations is where the information is coming from. Mm -hmm. That's insane. This will be pretty much like living in a microwave. Of course, they're saying that's ridiculous, but no, it is. I have actually a friend who is developing Ford plus G equipment and we talk a lot about that because I'm also very worried about it but I do know for myself if I would live in a city which has 5g around me I leave the city mm -hmm. because it is not where we need to be and it's not needed too that's the craziness it's again a big commerce right it's yeah, a big driving thing again for the telcos and so on now but what I believe is a future which is still 5g but using frequencies 4g uh, basically okay not more unhealthy because i'm not saying 4g is healthy but not more unhealthy than what 4g is today and this can be done actually this friend of mine is doing it Th this can be done um so now i hope that enough governments will be smart enough to block these frequencies lucky for us today most 5g attempts are still in the 4g frequencies today so okay. today we're still kind of okay but this will change and uh, if they want to go to massive adoption um, to get where they want to be, full domination, because that's in a way what it is. Um, they, that's what they want to do. And that, of course, is not where we want. We don't want to be. We don't want to become a small part in a big AI machine. Eh? The Matrix, like that movie, mm -hmm. is becoming possible. Eh? No. Uh, because they're thinking about putting things in our head and stuff no. like that. I don't want to be conspiracy theorists, which I think I'm not. 
But that being said, I don't want to be part of a big AI machine or plenty of big AI machines owned by lots of corporates. That is a future which scares me. That I don't want. I want a future where we are all independent, being able to think for ourselves, being able to decide what information we trust or which be who we communicate. And also if something happens that our internet doesn't go away. And that's what we're fighting for. What you, you just talked about fears. What are you now afraid of? Um, am I afraid? Well, it's, it's a big vision, right? I'm afraid to disappoint that for sure. Why? Um, I mean, it, it's like a moonshot vision, but I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you have to, you have that kind of big vision. Maybe you're not get there, but at least you started something. Isn't that the beauty? Or, a lot yeah, of people don't start anyway because they want it to be perfect. Yeah, I know, but still to make this possible, a lot of people get motivated to help by becoming a farmer or by joining a project one way or the other. Uh, or investing in, as an example, technology company. And that, of course, sets expectations, which, mm. which I want to live up to, right? Um, so yes, it, is it afraid to, uh, about this point? Yes, and of course, I will do everything I can to, to not do that. But yet still, it's a big story and there is risk of to it. So, but that's more to do with me as a person. Huh? We talked about that guilt that's still a little bit there. It's like that's a guilt feeling at the end. I we are transparent when people do invest. So in a way we should say, look, you know, there is risk, you know that this is not guaranteed to succeed. So in a way I shouldn't even have to feel guilty about that, right? But still we are human, aren't we? So if you ask me, what are you afraid about? This is going to the essence of me, which is somewhere in there is still a small child saying, oh, I cannot disappoint. I need to make sure that the people around me are happy and that the promises I'm making can be fulfilled even as transparent as we like to be, right? So that's an honest answer to your question. Um, of course, I'm, I'm also afraid of running out of cash, which lucky, thanks to our community, every month we get cash in, but you never know what the future gives, right? So of course, we're afraid about that too. But these are all, I, that, that being afraid doesn't bring us far, isn't it? It's more about we have to be confident in where it can go. What I do see is, and what gives me confidence is that if I talk about this with people, and not just me, right? It's the community. When I say we, it's the community. It's amazing how people respond. People mm -hmm. do want this. Yeah. Um, governments do want this. Also governments, enterprises yeah. do want this. Banks do want this. So there is definitely a good probability that this can happen and will happen. We just need to go forward. Do we know the right path? No. And sometimes people see this as, we know where, where, where we want to be, yes, that we know, right? And we know what the required steps are, but it goes a little bit zigzag, right? Figuring out the way how to get there. That's the way it works. That, well, that's, that's also the fun part. Yeah, it's a fun part. I don't mind. I don't mind putting a, stock, a stick in the ground and walking to it and then putting another stick in the ground and walking again. Even if that is not a straight line, I think that's part of life, isn't it? But of course, people can also see this like, um, I have part of the community who then gets scared. Oh, they're going to that direction. It's still in the right direction, but it's not perfect. And then you go in another mm -hmm. direction, still not perfect, right? And what do they see? They see that 90% shift. Oh, they're changing course. Well, yeah, we're still going to the sea where we want to be and we're coming from this mountain. But yeah, there was a lake in front of us. We have to change our course because we don't want to swim, right? And eventually you'll get there. But yes, with the mind, it's easy to see, oh yeah, sure, you cannot go in a straight path. But I can tell you, a lot of people in our community go, whoa, you're changing something. Does that mean it's not good enough and it's not going to work? No, it just means we're figuring it out along the way how to no, get there. No. Do, 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 do you have for yourself an image within 10 years, who is Christophe? <laughs> That's a broad question. Well, it's, everyone has their own part eh, of, 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 of trying to self-improve. And obviously that's for me, super important. So where, where do I want to be? I, I hope that what I like most, I'm a creative person. And what I like most is working with young people um, and being able to use that creativity with them to give them 
confidence and to help them. One of the reasons I hope that we will have the ability to, along this path, um, motivate other people to put money together, to give young people the ability to grow in their own path. And that sounds very generic, but uh, giving, and it, it's mainly to do with confidence, eh? giving people confidence that look, whatever your idea is, you can do it. You just have to put your mind to it. And if you want, I'm there to help. And this is my own personal wish. I had my incubator before, which is now a little bit slow because of the threefold project we're working on. We are putting all this resource in this. But eventually, I hope in a couple of years to have much more time again to give this to other people um, and together work with, because, with young people, because at the end, it's where the future is. Yeah. Uh, people, a lot of these young people are different eh, than when we, when we were young. And I admire it, actually. And what, what do you see as a difference between now and, and, and when you're 20? They're very different, actually. Um, they're more, they're more purpose-driven, they're more aware, more consciousness? Yes, yes, yes. And a lot of them struggling because a lot of them want to be conscious. They have that passion, yeah. that drive, but they feel themselves stuck in this world, how it is today, yeah? the 3D world where and they're made things from. are crap and you have presidents lying around and it doesn't even matter. And, you know, there is this silliness happening. And for those people, that's tough because to them, that's like an attack on what they are and what they want to be. And there are amazing amounts of young people who cannot deal with that anymore. But by the way, there are also amazing a lot of people like us who are maybe not the youngest anymore, who are also making that shift and are saying, look, this is enough, right? This cannot be the reality anymore. It's becoming Kafka. Yeah. It's becoming ridiculous. So we need something else, right? So the change is happening as we speak and that makes it so beautiful. And what I hope I am able to do is give inspiration to those people and say, don't worry, don't worry. Another system is coming, right? Don't worry, just go together with like-minded people. There are enough of them already because this is growing like crazy. Make a company who caters for those like-minded people and act from out of love, compassion, respect, uh, not only with your mind, but also using your heart. heart. And then things do change. Your life becomes so much more happy. I am now, Peter. You know me, right? How long, how long do we know each other? 20 years. 20 years, right? And I've always had amazing respect for everything you've done. I told you yesterday at one point in time, you probably literally saved my career without you realizing. But we were also very different at that time. We had to, everything had to be with the mind, isn't it? Everything had to be with the mind. You had to be like super efficient and everything had to be right. And, and that's, now, but that's I don't know me. about you, but I am 10 times more happy now, huh? Me, me, I'm a hundred times. And the big secret is that I don't live from my mind anymore, but from my heart. And I use my mind as a, as a servant, but it doesn't drive me anymore. It used to drive me. You see, me too. I, I, I used to be a slave of mind. I want this, I want to do And I'm going to be happy if I reach this. I'm going to be happy if I reach this deal eh? and this deal. And I never did. I was never happy. But now I switched it. I flipped <laughs> it around. I'm happy. And then I will become successful, whatever the term success is. And it's really about listening to your heart. It's really that, it's that simple. Well, and the, it, it took me years to say it in public, listen to your heart. And now I just say it out loud. It's like, I don't care anymore if you think I'm stupid or whatever, or philosophical, because I really believe in that. And I see these people struggling with, because they are living from their mind. They're living in some kind of um, imagined, conditioned, um live, brainwashed. yeah brainwashed identity what they think about themselves but they are so far away from themselves yes i couldn't agree more but i think we can put it together in one sentence i think both of us realized that it's the path towards yeah. which is the happiness so yeah. we, the destination while we are doing is the journey the it's a journey it's a journey it's a journey while before i thought the, the destination was the happiness. Yeah, me too. Okay. Oh, once the company is acquired or yeah. once my product is working or yeah. whatever that is, right? Or once I'm at the end of the marathon. Yeah. No. And now I realize that this, sorry for my language, is complete nonsense. It's, yeah. it's, it's bullshit. Now I realize, no, it doesn't mean anything. If you start by giving and yeah. have that purpose, I'm happy. Me too. I'm working harder than I have yeah. ever in my life. But I'm super happy. 
because this path is wonderful, you meet the right people and whatever. And at the end, we will just only be more happy because maybe certain yeah. things realize. But even if they don't realize, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm still happy, right? And, and that changes. And, and also the fact that the and another realization is that uh, I thought if I would reach that destination, I would be somebody. So that destination would be attached to my identity. Whereas I now, it's like driving in a car in the fog, and you're only going to see hundred meters ahead. And you just need, need to follow the path which gives you positive uh, energy. You can feel it in your heart. You can feel it in your gut. And even if it sounds a little yeah, non-traditional, but it's that path that you need to follow. And once you do that, you see immediately you're going to attract new people in your life. You will get all the resources that you need in terms of money or whatever. And the impact that you're going to get on other people is immense, which again gives you a positive happy happiness feeling so instead of focusing as the happiness as a destination it's more if you like uh the, the you're focusing on a more of a purpose then the happiness is becoming a side effect it's like focusing on money if you focus on doing it for the money that's why i don't believe in the complete shareholder value thing it, that that's complete bullshit but if you focus on a more purpose driven thing uh, automatically your money will come and your beta will be fixed and that is for me the, the biggest realization because we may be doing great things in our area, but on, on a global scale, what the fuck? I mean, <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, we invented like, uh, what is it called? Content-based, now deduplication. Yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, and now what? Because then I realized I enjoyed doing the process because when it was exited, I was like, oh, it's over. And now what? If you would go back, Christophe, to yourself and you would meet the, the 20 year young Christophe, what would you say to him now? <laughs> Come here, let's talk. <laughs> there are definitely things. Well, look, I have a little bit autistic behavior once in a while, small, right? But, um, and at that time, much more even, I couldn't always express myself the way how it should have. And definitely, I couldn't use my heart. So I wish I had learned these things more early, early, but then on the other hand, maybe that was my journey, isn't it? Maybe I had to go through all of this in the good way and the bad way and yeah, seeing life from that perspective to at the end, to be honest, at one point in time, come to this point of emptiness where it was like, what's this now, right? I made money, I was successful. And now what? My wife is struggling with her health. Now, well, now, and everything just became so different. It all didn't matter anymore. And that was maybe my journey I had to go through. But what I believe is that thanks to many things, actually, it's not the same. People are different because there is so much absurdity happening outside that you, if there is even some logical sense to yourself and norms, then you cannot believe that all of that is realistic and is the truth then you have to come to the conclusion much faster where you say, oh, out there, it's crazy what's happening. This is the, these are the remainder of a really crazy uh, world which is broken, but this will but, be but, fixed eh, no matter what. We're on the eve, it's tilting, eh? Yes, it is. And that's, I consider myself so lucky to be born in this period where actually the internet was just being born and we went through so much change and that's just beautiful and the next 10 years oh la la that's going to be much more change even huh? and i believe personally yes it will be a challenging period for sure but eventually it will be for the better huh? for sure yeah, 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 yeah. i mean it's it's just what you explained i also believe that this painful transformation journey that's actually a gift it wouldn't have brought you and it it would not have increased your awareness and consciousness about yourself it wouldn't. You would do still, still. You would still do the same things and buy and and build company after company. You would, you would have not learned. Universe would say, "Stuff, you need to learn some things." Yeah. And yeah, and still is eh? every day. But it starts with that, right? Accepting. I always thought about myself. Oh yeah, I know a lot, and then I realized I know nothing. And it's that kind of shift by then. Uh, being open for the change and for the future 
which also makes you much more happy. It's like you said it very beautifully. You, you, you follow your heart. Okay, of course, you still need your mind too as yeah, a sort of, of safety mechanism or something. Um, it's a safety mechanism. That's why it's con constructed there. Eh? Probably, probably, yeah. Uh, no, that's hey, it was constructed. We were in the woods. You saw a tiger. The tiger, tiger was coming at us. You had three options, fight, freeze, or, or uh, what is it? Fight, flight, or freeze. That was it. But that's the thing we're doing right now. Eh? And if you listen to your heart, uh, to your head, to your mind, that's it's still conditions for that. It's if you do things from your heart, you don't, you will, you only see the, the positive thing. And you, you, you're going to do it. But if you're going to think about it, you're always going to see doubts and problems. And mm, maybe I should do that. That that's really where it's meant for. And it's a good thing. Otherwise, we would really be doing stupid things. But the chances that you will meet a tiger in the streets is pretty low these days. But, <laughs> but, 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 but we're giving ourselves stress all the time. And we're, it's, I, I don't, when I say to you, the answers are in the silence. It's about really being still. And there are lying the, the answers. But if you're going to feed your minds all the time, it doesn't work. Couldn't agree more. And that's now our mission, isn't it, Peter? Giving in, being, being courageous enough to talk about this with other people. Yep. I think if both of us would have been able to see what we were doing here like 10 years ago, we said, right? Yeah, indeed. Yeah, but it's true. And it's, it's, it's really strange, like between brackets, is that, uh, yeah, 10 years ago, I would say, are you mental or whatever? But for me, this is now the, the most obvious thing. Even yeah. talking about it, even it means that you can lose people about talking about it. I'm okay with that because I know in the end it's going to be okay. They will be taking care of you. Why? But it's nothing. Look, what we're doing is only nice, isn't it? That's how I look at it. We're, we're trying to be nice to people. We're trying to give them love, eh? not in the way of how to respect someone and give them what they need. I mean... That is beautiful, isn't it? And then as a consequence, we get things back. It's not like we're not getting something back for it no, too, right? No, no, no. Much more by giving, I get back much more than I give. Um, and that sounds so, yeah, a little bit, uh, <laughs> when I would have told that to me like 20 years ago, say, yeah, yeah, but it's true, actually. It's absolutely yeah. true. But it starts from the intention that you set. And this is something like they say in meditation. And I was like, what the fuck is this? But it's really, that's the core of it. If you set that intention, people feel that anyway. And then amazing things can happen. It's that thing. If you set the intention, I want to give, but I want to get back more. No, then it won't work. It needs to be selfless. It's like, There's I give intention. because I want to give. It's the journey. I like to give because it gives me a good feeling. So I give. And then as a consequence, maybe you get back, but not necessarily. Now, by the way, we were talking about something... I, and, and you had of I guess much sooner than me, but when I listen to certain artists from like maybe 30 years ago or 40 years ago, then I realized that there were also many aware people at that time, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, just I didn't, I never listened to it that way. No, but now true. if you then listen back, say, oh, but they're already saying all of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these things are as old as they are. Maybe, and there are some, even some theories where they try to burn this uh, kind of wisdom. Eh? But the thing is, Christophe, it's quite simple. That twist kind of wisdom has been existed in us for so long, but we have worked so hard, drank, eat, all, all did some amazing, stupid things to really run away from our pain. Yeah. And, and, but it was all the time in us, but we didn't listen. It was screaming at us. It started with a whisper. And then it was screaming with us. And until one day, yeah, it breaks down. Yeah. So, but now we're lucky because this world is changing. I mean, it but cannot go on like it is, which means that all of that will become mainstream. Yeah. And that I'm very convinced about. But it is I'm coming in. It's coming. Convinced. It's, it's this coming. It's happening. And this is amazing, actually. Uh, this is happening. And yes, there is some detox. Eh? There is some stuff will have to happen before that can become mainstream, but it is. And that is wonderful, isn't it? So we're in a way the pioneers of, of the future and, um, and the more, but, but you feel it, eh? it's growing, it's growing fast. 
I, I had an, uh, an CEO entrepreneur on the podcast, 23, 24 years young, Tom Husson. And he has a company in AI. And, uh, and I was like, what is your purpose in life? Oh, I'm going to use this AI technology. I'm going to use it uh, in data centers and I'm going to fertilize in a perfect way uh, Africa so that these farmers and the people who are living there have food and that can make something of their lives. <laughs> Just 24 years young. Yeah, and it's capable. Eh? The technology is there. And yeah, 24, 24 years. And why old. not? Eh? And why not? Yeah. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm getting this money from my customers, from corporates to fund my mission. 24. And I was like, shit. <laughs> we needed a little bit more time, but better late than ever. <laughs> yeah, I think everything is on time. So, uh, I mean, uh, it is what it is. So, uh, if we can now inspire younger people, people not to go through all this kind of uh, stupid things and uh, start anyway, but you need to learn it for yourself. It's something deep in yourself and it's not a logical thing. You have to feel it. I agree, Peter. Christophe, I want to thank you for the hour. It was a very inspirational hour conversation and uh, yeah, we will meet soon. Eh? And I'm going to put all the details for the Threefold uh, organization and also the foundation which is like in a, a non-profit uh, uh, organization. Uh, I'm going to put it in, uh, in the comments below. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I see you very soon. Doing this. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.